I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Um, I everybody has a way to see this forum a little bit differently. If you see the presenter and you see the slideshow, there's a little gray slider. You can slide that over so you can see things a little bit. You can see the speaker bigger and the slideshow smaller or vice versa. So you can move that however you would want to see that. So feel free to do that so it works for you on your computer. I am just a huge proponent of slides, slides so I like to have slides up. Um, so, like I said, we're recording tonight. Um, my name is Kristen Swift. I am the VP of programs for the PTSA this year. Um, this is our first of many programs that we're going to have this year. I don't have a quite schedule for the rest of the year, um, but we promise to be very engaging and hopefully get things out there to you that are going to be relevant to all the students. Um, I'm going to put, I put this in the chat before, so the new people that are here haven't seen this, but I'm putting in the chat a PDF link so you can see all of the links, all of the Instagrams, all the websites that all of the speakers tonight are talking about. You don't have to worry about like copying it over as the slides up or listening to what they're saying and copying it or taking a snapshot. It's all in this, um, this document right here. And if anybody happens to bring up something tonight, that isn't on here because I didn't know they were going to bring it up. We will add it later. And when we post the video, um, we will also post this document. So you'll be able to get to it at that point as well. So just wanted to let you know. Um, questions are going to be done at the end. We're going to try and do them through the chat. So please chat them um, to the hosts and co-hosts. Um, <clears throat> I changed my name back from questions, Kristen. I'm going to do it to the hosts and co-hosts just in case there is an emergency and my computer completely dies so that Kim Carlson could take over and be able to have the questions still. So um, we're gonna do that at the end. So all of these speakers are gonna speak first before we take questions. So please, um, you know, as they're speaking, you're welcome to put them in. Um, then we can kind of group them together. That's, that's great. Um, but we will take questions at the end. Our speakers should take only about a half an hour. Um, and then we should have a good half an hour for questions as well. So hopefully, that will be great. Um, so I'm going to start off. I'm going to pass this over to Rachel Fox. I already talked a bunch, so I won't talk that much, but I, I do want to say thank you to Kristen. This is a big undertaking, and it's so informative and so wonderful, and you put a lot of work into this, so thank you for doing that. So welcome new and returning Tiger parents. Um, here we are at the start of another school year, a relatively a little bit more normal one than we've had in the past couple of years. And I'm pretty excited. I said that earlier too, it's, it's a really fun time. And we're super thrilled that everybody is here for this All Things SPHS Forum. Um, if you aren't familiar with what PTSA stands for, it stands for the Parent Teacher Student Association. And in a nutshell, you know, that is who and what we were all about parents, teachers, and students. Um, we've created some goals this year, um, and they're being shared with you, as you can see up on this slide. And simply said, I mean, it says it here we want to increase family engagement, and we hope we're doing so with forums just like this one. We wanna be effective communicators. You know, We want you to check out our website, which Tisa is gonna talk about, our Instagram and Facebook, which Maureen is gonna talk about. Um, and then we have newsletters that Maureen does too. So we wanna be good communicators. And we wanna be good community partners with a lot of people who are on this, this Zoom with us right now. You know, We had our welcome back coffee with music boosters and boosters, and that's what it's all about for us. When you go to our website, you can donate everywhere and you can join everywhere. So we, we really wanna be community partners with our with as many of our community members as we can. And we wanna provide programs that help students um, and their families succeed. And we can help do this by raising money, which we've talked about through No Sweat and our Wish Night, and just by getting more members and, 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 and raising membership. So these are all, in my mind, from years in corporate culture, attainable goals. You know, And these are definitely attainable with all of your involvement. So please consider joining. And you know, this organization is over 100 years old and it's worked. Um, and I sincerely believe that schools and most importantly, our students are better off because of the PTSA. So that's it, short and sweet. I'm gonna pass it over to Maureen who is doing all of our communications um, and thanks so much. Hello everyone. Um, super quick, uh, <clears throat> the PTSA newsletter comes out every other Monday. It's coming out later today, I had some problems with our software today. So 
<clears throat> also, the way that you get access to this newsletter is that you have to be on our mailing list. So the way that you can do that is when you um, become a member, you'll automatically be added, but you can also opt in when you confirm your registration data through the parent portal to get PTSA um, communications. So um, if you haven't done that, please go to our website, uh, become a member and um, get our newsletter. It tells you everything that you need to know about what's going on at the school. Um, we do have an Instagram and a Facebook. Both of them are listed here. Um, Instagram, uh, as Rachel said <clears throat> in the earlier meeting, is a conglomeration of PTSA activities, things we need you to know, fun things about the community, the school, the clubs, the athletics. We try to put everything on there and recognize everyone. Um, so there were pictures from the football game, um, you know, pictures from, <clears throat> from all the different clubs in the ASB. So look, watch that, fun stuff, lots of stuff on the stories. And then the, um, the PTSA Facebook page is also there and we do put information up there as well. So if you um, are ever wondering what's going on, you can check that out as well. And that's all. Great, thank you so much. We're gonna pass it over to Tisa who's gonna go over the website. You are muted, Tisa. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, here's the website. We've got three buttons right at the top for join, donate, and volunteer. Um, we also have our latest news that's usually come in the newsletter, but also is posted here. Um, and if you wanna see past posts, you can just go ahead and click. We also have these eight convenient buttons at the bottom. So if you wanna um, find out about our meetings or see our calendar or join, they're all there to volunteer. Uh, and our contact information is down here as well as links to our social. Uh, on, I'm gonna just go off through a few of the pages. Our meeting dates page, we have all the information of the dates um, for the forums and the meetings. And uh, we also have a link to our forums page. Uh, and here we have information on the forums that are coming up. And we have recordings of past meetings and forums. So if you ever missed anything, you can go to our YouTube page or you can just go to this page and scroll down. And I will start curating and removing some of these, but I thought all of these forms were so interesting. I don't have the heart to take any of them off. So, uh, and then rolling down to the next page, we've got um, also at the newsletter page. So when you, uh, you can sign up for the newsletter here or read the latest one on this web page as well. Uh, the other page we've got that I wanna talk about is the community page. So we've We've included links here to a lot of the organizations that we think um, you might be interested in. The school district, uh, other organizations like Tiger Boosters and Music Boosters, uh, the Tiger newspaper is always interesting, um, all sorts of things here. And we've also included a list of what we think are useful Instagram accounts. Um, so if you ever forgot what we mentioned here, you can look it up. Here's the classes down here. Here's parents groups here, the counselors here. Um, and I wanted to also bring this up. So we also have a little click to the Parent Square. You saw Mr. Principal Eldred's uh, message about Parent Square. So if you ever forget how to get there, it's right there. Uh, and I didn't make a copy of the COVID page, but we did update the COVID page, including links for you if your student's sick or and if your student's returning to school. So that's available. And we have a four students page. Um, there's more information if they click through it, but just a high level, we've got information on our mini grants, the Reflections Art Program, scholarships, and grad night. We're hoping for grad night again this year at Disney California Adventure. Um, and then we also have a calendar page, and this is also subscribable, and it, we're trying to make one place where everybody can put their events together. Um, so even things like if uh, boys basketball has a car wash, we'll try to put it on here um, so everybody can share their fundraisers. Uh, Again, you can subscribe it. We also have um, other PTSAs information on here. So if Marengo's having a meeting or Royal Vista, that should show up here as well. Uh, and then we do have a link if you wanna to get to the school calendar here. And we have a teacher's page where we uh, talk about wish night and the teacher and staff appreciation. If you wanted to sign up to help with that, you can click on that. And we have our join and donate page, which I know we've already talked quite a bit about, but donating umbrellas, our bundles, um, and then we also 
uh, make it possible for you to donate to the boosters or the music boosters in the library directly from our page. And my last thing is if anybody's interested in running the website next year, please let me know. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Tisa. I really appreciate it. So go to our website. We, Tisa's put in everything you could possibly ever imagine and need in that website. So um, now I'm going to hand it over to our wonderful principal, Mr. Eldred. Good evening, Tiger families. Thank you, PTSA, so much for uh, hosting this uh, event. Uh, it's so valuable every single year to be able to bring everybody together and disseminate so much important information about the school. Uh, let's start with uh, all the good stuff because it's all good right now. Uh, we are uh, down one counselor and yet we managed to uh, program every single kid in, uh, uh, on campus. Um, and uh, they are finally at the point where they are cleaning up the last of their appointment lists. And uh, at this point, everybody's in classes and everybody is uh, no longer standing outside the counseling office asking for appointment. So that is positive. That is progress, people. On top of that, we won our first football game on Friday. I hope everybody came out, but uh, we're already off to a great start uh, this year with Tiger football. Super excited. I'm hoping that we have a repeat of last year plus even more. Uh, on top of that, I just want to say a thank you to all of our families really for their patience with uh, the start of the school year with our counseling team. Uh, with um, just some of maybe the normal hiccups that we have at the start of the school year. Um, I know sometimes maybe it seems like, uh, what's different this year about last year? I can assure you after 30 years of doing high school, it looks the same to me every single year. But nonetheless, we appreciate your patience and uh, we are off and running. I just want to take a moment to talk about some initiatives that are super important to me, starting with joining PTSA. This uh, organization is extremely valuable to this school, I encourage people to not only join, but to get involved in some way, shape or form anything uh, to be able to help uh, honestly our, our, our students and our teachers uh, at the school site. On top of that, uh, I just wanna put in a plug for boosters. I know they're coming up later, but uh, they provide an incredible amount of financial support to sports and arts programs on the campus. Uh, and the only way they can do that is through bingo, please consider getting involved in uh, bingo and helping us out there in order to be able to uh, provide the funds that uh, this organization does for our uh, students and uh, our, our athletes. Uh, and then uh, this also includes, of course, our music boosters uh, out there, uh, as always, uh, working uh, the football games, running the snack bar. And if you appreciate the snack bar, then you most definitely want to get involved with uh, the music boosters because they're not just about hot dogs people. They also are involved in the instrumental arts. So please support them as much as you possibly can. And then finally challenge success, which I know is gonna be mentioned uh, tonight at some point. Uh, this is a partnership between us and Stanford University working together to try and help our parents and our students understand that there needs to be a balance between school and life. Remember when we were kids and we used to sleep you know, and eat and uh, spend time with our family and friends, those things are still important, we are finding. And so these are things that we value and we know you value too, just as much as academics and education. So please consider joining the Challenge Success and getting involved in some of those initiatives as well. The bottom line is, is uh, South Pasadena High School is, stands ready as always to provide your student with a world-class education that will pre prepare them for life beyond high school. And we really want to make sure that we um, not only prepare your student, but help them to become the very best version of themselves. So thank you everyone for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Fantastic, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna get my slides back up. And next to speak is one of our assistant principals, David Speck. Nice to see everyone. I'm excited to be back for another great year at SPHS. A um, couple of my goals for the year, just making sure to make really strong connections with students and, and faculty members, and just make sure that, you know, getting I'm going to be getting more involved in challenge success this year in my position. And um, so I'm really excited about that and, and really just making sure our students are connected to our school, but also are making connections outside and, and have a good balance. 
balance. That's a, that's a big goal for us is, is uh, balance. Um, this year, we're changing things up a little bit in the assistant principal realm. Um, we have split the students uh, by alphabet. I'm going to be taking on letters A through Lee, L-E-E, -E, if the first initial is F. So F Lee, we had um, had to split it partway down the lease. Um, so those will be my students that I will be working with, um, discipline, counseling issues, things like that, parent communications, all that fun stuff. Um, but just those are my, my students who I'm going to try to um, make really strong connections with. Um, in addition to the rest of our, our almost 1,500 students on campus. Um, another thing I'm overseeing in my position is state testing. So CASP testing, physical fitness testing, all of that I'll be taking on. Um, you'll be hearing um, from Vanessa shortly about um, the testing and alphabet she's taking on as well. Um, another thing that um, it will go through my department is course approvals. So students taking courses outside of um, our school, um, those approvals will go through me. Um, you'll um, go on the counseling website and there's a course approval form. Um, it's mostly for classes that we offer over the summer. Same courses we'd offer via SPEF would be offered um, anywhere else that they'd be wanting, wanting to take those courses. I got muted all of a sudden. Can you hear me now? Um, any other courses that they would be taking outside of school? Um, however, if it fits within their four-year plan and it's a course that we offer um, those are courses that they would be taking on our campus. Community service, 45 hours of community service. Um, the Tiger Bulletin, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. Um, we were always posting different things that you can do for community service um, to help out in the neighborhood, to help out in the community. Um, so those are still things that are really important as we um, start to bounce back from COVID. Um, also attendance reminders. Um, just a really important reminder for families, if a student has an appointment and has to leave school during the school day, um, they need to be either picked up by a parent in the front office, or better yet, have your student bring a note in the morning, drop it off of the attendance window with Ms. Carlson, receive a grounds permit, and then at the time that they need to leave for their appointment, they can just meet their parent at the car. They can meet, walk home if they need to, walk to the appointment, but it makes it so much easier. If a student leaves campus um, without obtaining a grounds permit or without being checked out, it's a truancy and we can't, we need to be able to, for safety reasons, keep track of our students who are on campus. So if there were an emergency and a student had left without giving us a note, we wouldn't know where they were and we'd be definitely looking for them on campus. Um, Tiger Bulletin, third and fourth period teachers are gonna be sharing the bulletin with their students every day, any updates. It's a great bulletin. Um, Ms. Nuno, my assistant, um, helps to put things together on there, um, coordinates with our um, uh, school clubs, activities, people who wanna put, put notices up. It's very visual, very Instagram looking. Um, we're hoping to get that going as well and getting some of these announcements out there via social media. But the um, bulletin is a great place for families to look and for students to look to see if there are um, activities, community service and things and events going on campus if we need volunteers for things. Um, one last thing that I don't have on here that's really important that uh, seniors have been asking me about is senior privilege cards. Um, a senior privilege card is for a senior to be able to leave campus at uh, lunchtime. They have to have the card on them and they have to qualify based on grades and having good attendance uh, the semester prior. So we're looking back at junior year attendance. Um, all of that will be sent out in the next week, probably next week, um, beginning of September. There will be a DocuSign that goes home to all senior parents. They will sign the DocuSign releasing liability of their kid to be able to leave campus. Once they sign, the student will receive the form and they have to sign it as well. Two signatures and we'll be able to give those cards to students. We will be receiving the cards probably, hopefully mid-September. We are waiting for Makeup Picture Day to get all of our seniors through, get photos, and then we'll get the cards for them. Thank you so much for having me. I love this forum and I love all of our South Pasadena parents, students, and families.
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mr. Speck. Now we have our brand new assistant principal that we all can't wait to meet, uh, Ms. Vanessa Blackwood. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, so as far as my goals for the year go, I would say the most important one for me is to encourage student wellness and balance. And um, in my past job, I spent a lot of time with um, restorative practices and I ran a wellness center for students. So I'm very familiar with their needs at this teenage time of their life. And um, I really enjoy talking to them and encouraging them. And my other goal is just to connect with as many students as possible and take good care of our teachers. Um, my student alphabet is with um, Lee, G Lee through Z. So if your last name is at the end of the alphabet, your child will be with me if there are any concerns or struggles or discipline issues. Um, I'm also in charge of AP and the PSAT testing. We just solidified today that our PTSA, sorry, our PSAT um, test will be on October 15th. It's a Saturday. And um, I'm rounding up proctors right now from our teacher population. And um, it's going to be from 8.30 in the morning to 12 noon. And we're gonna start getting your kids signed up the first week of September. So you'll see probably a parent square and some more information on the bulletin about the, the details, um, $25 per test. And we're going to have the juniors uh, sign up first and then the sophomores. Um, and as far as AP, AP testing goes, we're getting that organized as well. Your students who are in AP classes have already joined their AP classrooms with their teachers, and we're just getting ready to start that process. So thank you so much for having me, and, and please drop me a line whenever you can. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, next, we have Ms. Ishimaru, who's, there we go. Thank you so much. We'll talk to Ms. Ishimaru, one of our wonderful counselors. Good evening, everyone. Nice to meet uh, our freshman parents. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what counselors do at the high school. So we have three domains that we really spend our time in. The first would be academics. Everyone knows what that is. The grades, um, setting up schedules, having students make sure that they are in their classes correctly, uh, looking at our grad checks, uh, also A through G for students who are four-year bound right after high school. Our second is our career domain and how we work. We work really with our sophomore class in our career domain where we start, start talking about different types of careers that they can do once they get to, to college and try to find the pathways that go along with that. And our third is the social emotional uh, domain. And what that means as guidance counselors is we are actually the first line of that wellness, health and wellness. So if a student comes in, maybe they're upset about uh, taking a test and they didn't do so well, or they're having an issue with a friend, um, they can always see their guidance counselor first. That is the first line um, before any kind of referrals. Natasha Prime, who is our train your brain counselor, she's gonna be talking a little bit later about how that goes up after that. So that's really what what counselors do, among other things, we set up tents for the college visits. We uh, have uh, people come for our uh, different kinds of, um, uh, of scholarships, so we work with them also. The best way to contact counselors is really by email, and I'm going to tell you why. Most of the time, we're not always sitting in our office. Uh, for example, tomorrow and the next day, we will be in senior English classes. We just came out of the freshman study halls. The following week, we'll be with the juniors and the sophomores. So we are in and out of our office. So email would be the best way if you need to get in touch with us. Um, we do have phones, um, but just know that it's a little bit harder to us get to the phone than it is to get to you for email. Uh, currently, we have about 400 students students um, because we are down to four counselors. So please be aware of that. And please uh, know that we are getting back as quickly as we possibly can. But as you probably know, 400 students are a lot of students to get through. So please go ahead and email us. Uh, we will con contact you back within the 48 hours. And if it's the weekend, we'll be contacting you on the Monday coming up afterwards. What is Naviance? So Naviance is our web platform. We use Naviance for students to apply for colleges. It's where they put their college list. It's in ninth grade, we go through some personality, the uh, Myers-Briggs. 
We also go next on 10th grade, we do all the career assessment. By 11th grade, they are loading on colleges they are thinking about uh, applying to. And we also go through it with their seniors and they move it. And then we start um, sending everything through Naviance. It is what we use. We are so thankful uh, to the PTSA because they have funded this for us. It makes our life a little bit easier because everything goes electronically. It makes the student's life easier also because it's a one um, spot where they can hold everything that they need to send out. For in-depth counseling information, we have it on our sbhstigers.org website, it would be under the academics and there's a tab that says guidance and counseling. Uh, right now we are in the process of updating it with the new counselors in addition to any kind of information. It gets a lot of traffic during the spring when we start programming with the students. So it kind of gives you everything from the course catalog to just information you may need. So please make sure you look there under again, uh, academics and guidance and counseling. And lastly, we do also have an Instagram. Uh, Ms. Chalko, who used to man our Instagram, has left. So we are in the process of having one of our other counselors and our technician and at the, in the counseling office to go ahead and man that. So it will be up and running shortly. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That Their web information, even though it's not updated, is brilliant. Once I found the guidance and counseling web information, I was like, oh, it's all here. It's really, there's so much information on there. So I really appreciate that. Um, next, we're going to go to our ex student activities director, Casey Shotwell. Oh, I saw him come on. Casey, are you here? I am sorry, I was muted. I'm okay. my life. <laughs> uh, good evening. Welcome, sorry about that. Um, what is the Associated Student Body? The Associated Student Body is the nearly 1,500 students that we currently have enrolled at South Boston High School, Tigers one and all. And the leadership class is a fourth grade class where the elected and appointed representatives for those students meet to plan activities and the programs um, that support them throughout the course of the year. Um, the commissioners are the school-wide elected officials. There are 13 of them. Uh, four of them comprise our cabinet. The uh, commissioner general, you'll be hearing from her this evening. Internal affairs, our student uh, representative to the school board meetings, um, who's essentially the, the vice president, secretary and a treasurer. In addition to that, we have nine commissioners who focus in different areas. Uh, academics, activities, athletics, and assemblies. We also have one for clubs, and she'll be speaking this evening as well. Uh, noontime activities, publicity, uh, school and community. That one's not as obvious what it does, but they um, focus on events like uh, blood drives and outreach to the, to the um, community, so the connections between the school and community. And finally, a representative uh, from Spirit, from our pep squad. The class officers, we have 16 of them, four at each grade level. They, um, they plan the class activities, the bondings throughout the course of the year. The senior officers, as you might imagine, are particularly busy in this spring. And they also uh, hold a lot of fundraisers throughout the course of the year to help um, support those programs. Appointed positions have been growing in the leadership class over the years. We have two health and wellness officers, um, two officers for uh, diversity, equity, inclusivity. That's a relatively new focus of ours. So that's a, those are two positions that are growing. Uh, we have a brand new representative. Um, it's environmental sustainability, as that is something that's become more and more uh, um, of an interest and a concern to our students. And she's hit the ground running and is joining um, actually a, a county commission to help represent us there as well. We also have a videographer. We have a peer mediators rep. And I'm sure I probably left somebody out. Um, how do students get involved? Well, first and foremost, it's a um, SAC card. Purchase that SAC card or have an assembly on this Friday. And the SAC card is their kind of their way into many of the activities at school. Gives them free admission to football games, basketball games, gives them discounts to the yearbook, which they'll want to have at the end of the year, to dances, performances throughout the course of the year as well. So that helps obviously for them to get involved. They can also get involved with their class officers um, by joining their various committees. They each run an Instagram account. Um, and through our club system, and Stephanie will speak about that this evening. So there are lots of different ways to get involved. 
Um, we have an Instagram account that's run by the incredible Lauren, our commissioner of publicity. If you have questions, particularly of the students, or you want to see what activities are going on, you can DM her um, through that account. You'll also find in the bio a number of our other accounts for um, Noontime and Wellness are, are there, as well as a link tree to a variety of uh, resources that, for example, the health and wellness officers provide. Um, and I think that's it for this evening. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Now we are going to hear from our Commissioner General, Samantha. They are going to talk about what they do and what ASB does. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So in ASB, commissioners, um, there's 13 of them, as Mr. Shotla mentioned earlier, um, each have their own unique responsibilities within their role, but we all work together to plan things like assemblies, spirit days, dances, blood drives, club events, and a lot of uh, school-wide events like that. And so we do have a thing called a SAC card, which Mr. Shaw also <laughs> explained earlier. Um, it provides numerous benefits, as, uh, such as discounts on school events like dances, free admission to football and basketball games. It's the same things as a standard student ID, but instead it says SAC rather than ID on there. And so that's really what you're paying for. Um, and then the next thing that we also do in ASB is that we hold assemblies. And so typically these are held in the auditorium, but some um, all school events such as color day and homecoming are gonna be held on the, or at the gym or the football field. And they're used to pr promote dances and other events, activities, et cetera, to the school, but are also used as time for students to come together and share school spirit with things like competitions and talent shows. Some current events under work or that are gonna be under work very soon are the homecoming dance, the spirit week and picnic, color brush, color day, and winter formal, all of which every single student is invited and encouraged to attend. So lastly, parents can keep up with ASB events um, on at SPHS ASB on Instagram, or frequently check the school website for updates, as well as the Tiger Bulletin, which can also be found there. Um, we post pretty much everything, though, on the ASB, so I'd highly recommend that you check it out. And that's all for me, so thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Really appreciate it. Next, we have Stephanie, who is the Commissioner of Clubs. Hi everyone, I'm the commissioner of clubs for this year. So how do clubs work at SPHS? About a week after school starts, students are invited to attend a club's informational meeting where they are introduced to what clubs do, what goes into starting a club, and how they should reinstate existing clubs. And in early September, club rush happens where students go to different club booths and sign up to become a member. From there, clubs hold weekly or monthly meetings to educate their members about volunteer opportunities, guest speaker events, and what has been going on within their club. And throughout the year, there's also many school-wide club events students can attend, such as homecoming picnic. And last year, we had our club farmer's market. So how do students get involved? Students can get involved in our club culture by starting their own club or becoming a member of different clubs on campus. I currently run an Instagram account that's on the screen there. Um, it updates students on upcoming club events, whether that be school-wide or individual, and they can find everything related to clubs there. Um, I also think that clubs are a great way for students to get involved in our school and are a great way to make friends. Most, if not all, of the service hours required to graduate can be completed by being a part of various clubs on our campus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Next, we're gonna move over to athletics and hear from Anthony Chan, our athletic director. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, so uh, first of all, I, I know a lot of people did the summer tryouts, so we're kind of going already. Uh, we have a good list of um, our rosters. Um, for those of you guys, uh, you might have missed some of the tryouts. Um, there are makeup dates, and I'll talk about that in these bullets. Uh, first of all, how to co contact me or the coaches, um, just sphstigers.org, hit athletics, and then hit coaching staff. I'll give you an email. Um, Please don't use you know student emails to those coaches because a lot of times it does the blocking. Um, so parents are fine. Um, summer tryouts, if you miss them uh, for the fall, it's kind of already a little bit too late. We're kind of getting going already. Um, if, if anything, can contact me, um, but we're pretty much done. Uh, as far as things in the winter and spring, there are makeup dates um, and you can see those on the athletics page as well. Um, in the summer tryouts, uh, you can see the makeup dates. Um, I'll also post them into the Tiger Bulletin, so please keep an eye on those uh, if you're trying to look for uh, making a, a winter or spring team. Uh, most of those makeups will be in November. Um, getting cleared for athletics, we're using something different this year. We're using home campus. Uh, if you follow the instructions on the athletics page, just click athletic participation registration. Um, we're using home campus. It's a much more simpler uh, 
application. Uh, basically, you do all of your forms online digitally, and then you will need to take a form to a doctor's office uh, for a physical exam, and then you can upload it there as well. And then uh, between myself and our athletic trainer, we will approve uh, or deny, I guess, of who's approved to be in athletics. Um, you can also follow our athletics Instagram at sphs.athletics. It's run by me as well as the commissioner of athletics. Um, thanks. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Next, we're going to hear from Eric Shabbat, who is the president of the Tiger Boosters. Great. Thanks, Kristen. It's uh, great to be here uh, tonight. Thank you for having the opportunity. I'm going to touch on two things um, tonight. One is Boosters itself and how you can join, what Boosters does. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about Bingo, um, which Principal Aldred already did a great job of making the initial pitch for me. So first off, with respect to Boosters, we are the primary fundraiser for sports clubs and activities on campus. So don't think of boosters only connected to sports, think of uh, activities as well. Um, there's two ways you can um, support. One is to just join and be a booster member. That's a $50 membership. You can do that uh, through our website. Uh, that money goes into a general fund we use to support clubs and activities and sports through equipment grants and travel grants. Uh, so that helps um, clubs earn money towards safe travel um, for certain national events. Uh, sports that reach state finals, things like that, uh, or durable equipment that has a long life. Um, so think of like a baseball batting cage and something that's going to be around for years, uh, teams can put into fundraise through that. The other thing you can do is uh, donate directly to a team or club. 100% of your donation goes to that team or club. You can do that through our website. Um, those donations are tax deductible as well. Um, since we're a 501c3, so that's a way for you to support uh, your student directly in the activities that they that they do. Um, and then let me touch on Bingo. Um, so Bingo is the largest fundraiser for sports and activities um, on campus. It uh, gives back on average about $200,000 a year back to clubs and activities, and it does that through parent volunteers. Um, and there's two ways um, that you can support Bingo. One is if you are interested in becoming a bingo committee member, that has a commitment of about one Saturday per month. Um, over the course of a year, you will earn about $1,800 that you can direct to any sport club or activity on campus um, in exchange for your volunteer hours. So if you are interested in doing that, um, you can find an email on the, the Booster website. You can to the president email, send me that, and I'll get you in touch with the right people. The other way is through your sport activity, they will approach parents asking them to help volunteer on a given Saturday when the team volunteers to help support bingo. Um, by doing that, you help bingo run. That's a one time per season commitment typically for a parent. Um, that also earns money that goes directly back to the team or club. Those parent volunteers make bingo run. So without them, um, bingo would not exist. Without bingo, we would not have that $200,000 coming back to school. So it really takes um, kind of the village, uh, the proverbial village to support that. So would encourage you to, uh, to please consider supporting bingo either on a permanent basis, semi-permanent basis through being a committee member uh, or through when the request comes along through your team or club. Um, last thing, Tiger Run, another one of our major fundraisers. Um, happens in December, first Saturday in December every year. This is our 25th year. Um, Tiger Runs 5K, 10K uh, run through town. If you haven't done it before, would uh, love to have everybody be out and join us uh, this upcoming December. Website and Instagram are there. And uh, that is it. Thank you for the time. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So for all of you parents who are new, um, Tiger Boosters is different from Music Boosters. So now we're going to have Lauren Black come and talk about Music Boosters. Hey, Lauren. Hi there, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Lauren Black and I am very excited and honored to represent the Music Boosters. I also wanna give a quick shout out to Eric. Thank you so much. The Boosters are amazing and um, we all benefit from the Boosters. So I highly encourage um, participation in that as well as the Music Boosters. Um, our school has a fantastic music program that is far more robust than I had any idea before my child joined. So you can see on this slide, um, we have marching band, concert, jazz, orchestra, um, winter line, it says winter line, but it's winter line, which is a percussion ensemble in the spring. And then we have color and winter guard, which is actually um, a, 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 a sport that involves um, flags and dance that accompanies 
the marching band and competes with the marching band. So there are a ton of kids that that benefit for thank you that benefit who benefit from our fantastic music program directly. And then there is even more that rep that benefit indirectly. And as um, Mr. Eldred commented, uh, the music boosters run the snack stand. It is very expensive to run the music program and we have to make up the gap. And so we do that by doing bingo and the snack stand, snack stand during the football games. And um, we have spaghetti dinner night that will come up and we encourage you to participate. And there are many opportunities, including, um, and thank you again to PTSA. If you go to the website and you're making contributions, there's actually a separate link to, um, to support the music boosters. And I just want to say that to me, the music in our, that our school um, supports is such a fantastic opportunity to raise spirit and encourage all kids. I don't know if you went to the football game and the team was amazing. It was so great to have the band there and soon they will be on the field doing a halftime show. So I just really want to encourage everyone, if you want to learn more, please reach out. We have our website at the bottom, um, Instagram, and you are welcome to email or reach out to me directly. Happy to talk about it and really appreciate PTSA for holding the forum and um, the administration for providing the information and all the support. So thank you all so much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, now we have Carissa Adams, who is our school board member um, assigned to our school. So she's going to talk about the school board. Hello, everybody. Um, good evening. I'm Carissa Adams. And um, as Kristen just said, I am your new school board member. Um, so you'll see me at all the meetings and feel free to ask me any questions then and I'll hopefully keep you up to date with what's going on around the entire district. So um, as far as what we as school board members do for you, um, we will um, be meeting in the next month to put together our strategic plan for the year. But um, that is something that's done on a yearly basis. And with the goal of um, at all times to ensure that all of our kids throughout all of our schools are reaching their, their highest potential in intellectually, emotionally, and socially. And you can see through the high school, there's lots and lots of opportunities for that to take place uh, in the school day and outside. So um, hopefully we're helping to guide and ensure that along the way. If you'd like to read more about our strategic goals, you can always go to our website um, that's listed down at the bottom, spusd.net, go to the about tab, and then in strategic plan, and we'll have the new version updated after we meet in September. How can you watch or attend school board meetings? We would love for you to join us in person. Uh, we meet on the second Tuesday at uh, 6.30 p.m. It's a beautiful room at the school, uh, in the new school board building, school district building. And we would love to have you come and participate in an actual meeting. If you can't make it in person, we do record the meetings and um, actually do a live meeting. So you can watch the meetings live. And again, go to spusd.net. If you go to the About tab, click on Board of Ed Education, then you'll find a tab in there that shows you the meeting dates and how to watch the meetings. Um, Big question on people's mind may or may not be the school board elections this year. Uh, we were supposed to have an election this year, but the great news is we found out today that all four seats were uh, by candidates were run unopposed. And so there actually will not be an election. So um, yeah, so congratulations to all four uh, candidates who um, were you know up to run again. So. There will be another election in two years um, for the three seats. So anyway, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me by my email at kadams at spusd.net um, or I'm sure you'll see me around town and you can say hi. So welcome to all of our new parents and welcome back to everybody else. Great job tonight, everybody on this whole forum. Thank you. Thank you, Carissa, I really appreciate it. Um, next, we have Amelia Aldana here to talk about the South Pasadena Education Foundation. She's our president this year.
Sorry about that, I was actually muted. Hi everyone, I'm Amelia Aldana and I'm here tonight representing SPEF. Uh, we have been around for the last 43 years and in that time we've sought to raise crucial funds to support the education and enhance the enrichment of students at all five schools. One of the ways we do that is through teacher direct grants and major grants. Uh, we are proud to have increased that budget this year and are hoping to see lots of applications come in from our teachers. Um, every fall, we run the fall fund drive, uh, beginning with those letters that you see in your registration packs at the beginning of the year. Uh, it includes our phone banking week, which will come around in October. And then of course, lawn signs, which will be coming uh, to a lawn near you in November. In spring, we have our huge fundraising gala, Party Gras, which we were thrilled to have back last year. And I hope to see See you all there this coming spring and coming up in the last week of September so just in a few weeks away uh, we have food for thought which is an entire day of local restaurants offering a percentage of all proceeds back to our local schools um, so that day we invite you to stay out of your kitchen come and have breakfast brunch lunch coffee and dinner um, with with all of your friends and support our local schools uh, while supporting local businesses as well so stay tuned for more information on that for more information um, on SPEF, who we are and what we do, you can visit our website at SPEF, the number four kids.org. And um, thank you for having me and for hosting this forum with so much great information. Fantastic. Thanks, Amelia. Next, we're going to hear about student internships and how your children can get involved in those um, from Miss Sandra Matson Fennell. I think I said that right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sandra Manson Fennell, and I am your internship coordinator. Through the internship program, juniors and seniors can explore a career, earn valuable work experience, enhance their college apps, and earn five elective credits. To participate in the program, students are required to complete two after school workshops, which focus on soft skills, job acquisition skills, and job retention skills. And these will help prepare them for the interviewing process and help them succeed in their internships. So uh, you probably are aware that a lot of our kids don't have after school jobs. A lot of them are focused on college uh, preparation activity. And actually a lot of uh, folks in their generation are not getting their first job until after college. And they need these soft skills. We know that industry is asking for this and uh, we have to kind of reinforce that and get them ready to go. So this is a great way to do it. These workshops are held three times a year. And once completed, the student can apply for the internship in any future semester. The first set of workshops is going to be happening on September 13th and 14th. Students can register on our SPHS internship website. There's a link on the school site as well. It's under the academics tab but we also have the website on the, the slide here. Other dates they could take these workshops are January 11th and 12th and April 11th and 12th. Students, uh, once they do these internships, they'll be provided with a list of our vetted employers and descriptions of the available internships. And then the students will select the ones they wish to contact and they'll send them a cover letter. They'll hopefully get an interview and, uh, these positions that we have are actually aligned with our pathways at school. So if a match is made, a student will then complete 60 hours of work during the term to, end the, to earn those five elective credits. So please check out our website for more information. The uh, registration links are there as well. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Next, we have, uh, we're going to hear from Natasha Prime, who is our social worker for the district. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm your school social worker and Train Your Brain specialist. Uh, Train Your Brain is our comprehensive social emotional support program at the secondary level. Um, the team at the high school is comprised of me and Miss Fiona McHenry, who is our special education counselor, as well as uh, Ed Eddie Babayan, who is our therapist in partnership with Effective School Solutions. Um, as Ms. Ishimaru said, generally, if you have concerns about your student or uh, something's going on, your counselor would be the first uh, person to contact, and then they would refer to me if additional support is needed. Uh, however, we do also have a website that you can see up on the slide, and there is a self-referral form if a student wanted to refer themselves. Sometimes it might be something they're uncomfortable talking about, 
Uh, so that's available. There's also lots of resources and a description of what Train Your Brain is. And we have a link tree uh, as well. Some of the things, the primary thing we do is a lot of individual counseling with our students, a lot of crisis support, um, talking kids through those pesky panic attacks. Um, and uh, we also work with families, uh, a lot of parent conversations. Uh, we really like to collaborate with families whenever possible. Some of the things we're gonna work on this year, which I'm very excited about is we're gonna be working with the uh, APs on some more restorative practices and just rather than just trying to, you know, get kids more engaged, find out what leads to behaviors and work with them on uh, connecting more with the community. Uh, we'll also be providing under the Train Your Brain uh, program uh, uh, in-person professional development for staff and teachers. We're um, offering whenever possible we webinars, social emotional learning webinars for teachers. And we're always there avail available to consult with teachers. And um, we're hoping also to provide some workshops, uh, probably virtual this year for parents as well. So we have a couple partnerships uh, with uh, Effective School Solutions and uh, Chinatown Services, Community Services, um, who are also gonna be helping us with a lot of these restorative practices and uh, working with kids. Uh, workshops, yeah, we're gonna hope, hopefully do some workshops in study halls. Uh, last year we did, uh, went into all the study halls and did a presentation on cyberbullying. So um, we're always in tune to what the, current issue is and try to address that as much as possible. Um, so you can reach out to me at nprime.spusd.net uh, or you can reach me through your counselor or through our website and that's it. Fantastic, thank you so much. And last but not least, um, <laughs> Dowden Meyer is going to talk about our partnership with Challenge Success. Hi everybody, um, thanks for hanging out this long, it's been Bit of a haul since the PTSA meeting, but I appreciate you guys sticking it out. Um, my name is Sadie Stoudenmeyer, and I am one of the parents on our Challenge Success um, group at the high school. And uh, for our new parents, or maybe if you didn't know, just to let you know, um, what is Challenge Success? So Challenge Success evolved from a stressed out students project at Stanford University Graduate School of Education. South Pasadena High School began our partnership with Challenge Success in 2016. Our mission is to examine what a healthy and balanced high school experience looks like. Uh, we look at the perceived stressful race to college and beyond and is how it's increasing anxiety and stress in our kids. Our partnership serves to develop research-based strategies that provide students with the academic, social, emotional skills needed to succeed now and in the future. So our very first event is coming up on September, September 6th at 6.30. Um, psychotherapist and sleep specialist Heather Turgan will be uh, speaking to parents. She has a book called Generation Sleepless, Why Tweens and Teens Aren't Sleeping Enough and How We Can Help Them. So if you're interested in doing a preemptive strike, you could order the book now and read it before her talk. Um, so she's going to talk to parents um, again at 6.30 on the 6th, and then on the 7th, she's going to do a presentation for the students during an assembly at school. Um, again, this is our very first presentation of the year, and our priorities for the 2022-2023 school year um, are parent education. We're going to do some evening events for parents and students if your kids want to join. Um, some of the subjects that we are looking at presenting is college stress. Um, that's a big one. I know because my daughter just moved up to Cal State Monterey Bay on Friday and had her first day of classes today. So <laughs> um, we're going to educate parents about this stress and provide ways to alleviate it, as well as give a practical timeline for how to prepare for college applications throughout high school. We're also going to do a presentation about the counselors. Um, this was, actually came out of a challenge success meeting we had last year. And the theme is basically everything you always wanted to know about the many things counselors do for your kids. 
Um, I don't know if you guys feel the same, but my kids come home and I say, well, who'd you meet with? Oh, whatever. What'd you guys talk about? Eh, not much. So this is a good way for parents to get engaged in what our counselors do for our children. Um, we're also going to have um, parent discussion groups. This is going to be a time to discuss relevant topics to our students' well-being. We're aiming to have one every month or so. Something that um, Kristen and I have been talking about is instead of a book club, um, because who really has time, we might do an article club where we share out an article and then we discuss the article or just a topic. Uh, the two other points that we are going to uh, prioritize for this year actually came out of our surveys that we did last year. We did a challenge success student survey. One of the subjects that um, really was responded to quite a bit from our student body is workload. So we're looking to form a subcommittee of students and teachers um, to figure out how to increase engagement at school so it feels more meaningful, both for the teachers and the students. The other one is sleep. Uh, investigate whether school activities, um, how those dovetail to encourage more sleep and work-life balance in its relation to sleep for our students. We got a lot of kids that are in a lot of activities and how do we help them find some balance in that? And we think Challenge Success is a really great partnership between the admins, the teachers, the students, and the parents to help work together. Um, on our website, which is in the document that Kristen posted, um, we have a really interesting campaign called I Wish My Parents Knew. And these were things that kids said that they wished their parents knew. And then we had other kids actually read the comments. So you can't really tell who said what. But we're looking to make two more with our students. One is I wish my teachers knew. And the last one would be I wish other students knew. And this just gives our students a voice so they can communicate more openly about the things that they're struggling with. and you know that it's it's less visual where they don't have to stand up in front of a group of people and say it but through these campaigns they can speak it to the broader community so we're really excited about the year ahead for challenge success and um working as a community to help out our kids and that's it for me thank you so much sadie um that is the end of our presentations um, I want to thank everybody who came to present tonight. If you can just hang on a little bit longer, we have some questions that we're going to go over. If you have any more, please chat them to me. Um, we try, um, as I was chatting with Mr. Aldred, we're trying to cluster them per person I'm asking, but I know they're going to come in and wave. So I'm going to start with Mr. Aldred and we'll, and we'll go through how we can. I don't have too many questions yet, um, but I know, I know this audience, they'll come in pretty quickly. So Mr. Eldred, the first couple questions are really about the schedule. And one parent is asking why lunch is so short. And I also have a question about um, if you could explain why period three and four is five minutes longer than periods one, two, five, and six. Uh, so lunch uh, is what, 35 minutes. That's pretty standard for every high school I've ever worked in. That's generally how long it is. And we keep it at 35 minutes because otherwise the day is longer. Uh, as far as the five minutes uh, longer in uh, period three and four, it's designed to create a time when we can have uh, teachers read out announcements uh, to uh, the students in the room and uh, ASB can uh, make announcements over uh, the uh, loudspeaker to um, inform the students of what's going on on campus. Uh, there's a question about why students are assigned ingenuity classes. Why students are assigned ingenuity classes. Mr. Speck, I'm going to let you handle this one. Ingenuity is our online platform that is an easy way for a student to recover a class. We don't offer all recovery classes on there. We prefer that students recover um, certain classes um, during the school day in with a teacher because it's a much better platform. However, if a student needs to retake an English class from a prior year or they need to retake a class, then that's when we will put them in Edgenuity to be able to recover those classes. Um, and that way we have one room where we can have multiple subjects going on. Fantastic, thank you. Um, can you explain how late start days work, please? Yeah, late start days are designed to create uh, 
space for uh, teachers uh, to not only uh, meet together in departments, uh, but also collaborate, uh, spend time um, creating papers and making sure that they have uh, their room prepped for the day. It's also designed for faculty meetings. Uh, and uh, this year, it's also going to be utilized for us to meet in our WASC groups to get ready for our accreditation visit, which is taking place in March. So essentially, a school would start uh, at 930 instead of 830. And that, again, is designed for us to be able to work together as a faculty. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, another one for you, Mr. Eldred. Um, we get this every year, um, so you're going to hear it every year. Um, question about, uh, will there ever be lockers? Um, this parent's child. Oh, I knew, I knew that I was going to guess, and I figured it would yep. be <laughs> <laughs> Their backpack was 16 pounds today, so they're wondering yeah. if there's any help. So, uh, no, there will never be lockers, uh, and I'm not even sure where we would put them if we, if we, if we were going to uh, install them. Um, remember that uh, not every class meets every day, so not every book needs to be carried every single day. So students just need to um, sort of figure out what their day is going to look like and what it is that they need to be carrying with them on that day. And once you get to be a little older and you have friends that drive, you can put your bags in their car sometimes or your own mm -hmm. car. My son really likes that yeah. now that he's a senior. <laughs> <laughs> but it can, I, can I also can I add another another thing in about the yeah. about that is if a student has a study hall and they need to study for like their previous day's class, we do have copies of all of our textbooks available for checkout. Fantastic. Um, since you're talking about study hall, there is a question about how do students in home study participate in study hall workshops? The workshops that are put on by our counseling team. I assume that is it possible to have a home study as a ninth grader that would be in home study? No, and, and okay. A ninth grader has a mandatory study hall. So if you're talking about the freshman class, we will be using that and, and we will be going into their study halls. If you're talking anyone in uh, 10th, 11th or 12th grade, uh, we usually are in their English classes. So everybody has an English class. So that's where we do our presentations. Great. There is a question about if there's a possibility of requesting a counselor change. Uh, generally, uh, counselor changes are only um, considered once. Um, I mean, we have to give counselors the opportunity to work with families and the families work with the uh, counselor. So if there has um, been, you know, an effort and good faith to work together, um, which is what we want to see, and things still aren't working out at a certain point, then we can consider a counselor change. Uh, but you know, people need to understand that um, they don't get to pick their next counselor and um, it is, their counselor is assigned, their, their new counselor is assigned randomly based on uh, the caseload that uh, the counselor, counselors are currently carrying. Okay, and then in terms of counselors, there was a question about, um, because obviously we're, we're down a counselor right now, um, somebody has a senior and they're worried about having a permanent counselor for when they need to do recommendations for, for colleges. Um, should they just assume, is there going, is there any answer to that of like, should they just go with the counselor they're with and hopefully that person's gonna do their recommendations or is there hope that they might switch? One, one, of, the, one of the things that is, um, uh, special about the South Pass um, counseling team is, is that uh, they are very um, collaborative. Uh, they are um, constantly um, checking in with each other, backstopping each other. Um, I can't imagine that uh, whoever it is that is lucky enough to join this team uh, is not constantly uh, checking in with uh, the other members of the counseling team in order to uh, understand next steps, how to proceed, what should I do here, and then assisting because uh, they want to have a, uh, another team member who is just as effective as themselves. And so they're going to be doing everything they can to bring this person up to speed so that they're firing on all cylinders like uh, the current counseling team is. So, so, it, so it might be a bit of a combo where they're kind of working together is what you're saying. I, I can't imagine that they would not, but once at a certain point, it's, I think it's, you know, like a lot of jobs um, where when you've had um, enough time to, you know, to talk to people and to, to collaborate and to work together on a, on a couple of things, eventually there's that point where you sort of get released and you can do it on your own. 
So yes, there will be collaboration and yes, they will be working together. And yes, they will be making sure that they can bring this new counselor up to speed so that they operate as a team. What's the word that you used, Tracy? Synergy. That's the look we're going for. Awesome. That's what we have now and we aim to continue it. Do you have an ETA for when you're hoping to hire a new counselor by? I would love to have someone in place by the end of the month, but you know, South Pass is a very special place. Um, I know it's put a strain on the counseling team and on our families, but to me, it's worth the, the weight and the extra work in order to pick the right person. Okay, awesome. Um, there was a comment that um, somebody saw that Naviance was closed to students this summer, um, and they're wondering if that was not supposed to happen and maybe normally we can I, just make sure I, it's open all the time. I, I can answer that. Actually, it wasn't really Naviance that was closed. It was their clever. And clever is how they get into their Naviance, but it is up and running now. Uh, we had contacted IT during the summer because we did have a few students that had questioned that, and they had the the district had it down because of the whole clever operation and how they were working to get everything fixed. So uh, it is up and running. I do get my Naviance uh, things coming out saying uh, someone has added on a new college and everything. So it is it is working right now, except for the freshmen, we haven't started with them. Um, so when we will be going into the study halls to do that, um, and, and we will also be having a Naviance parent night for 10th or 12th coming up, but we are also will be doing one for our freshman parents. In, I believe it's in January, if I'm not mistaken. Great. Um, and then back to our assistant principals, can you clarify more of your duties? Is, is it that the alphabet listing is just to deal with discipline with the students or it, are there other duties that apply to the alphabet listings? It's most parent communications, um, including, um, I mean, positive and disciplinary. Um, if, if, if a parent needs to reach out to, um, an administrator about something, we will deal with those and, and handle those parents. Um, but in addition, we do have other duties like for testing, we've split it up where I'm doing the state testing. Uh, Vanessa will be doing, uh, Ms. Blackwell will be doing the AP testing and PSAT testing. Um, and we're also still working with our site leadership team. We're looking at different departments that we'll be um, kind of working with and overseeing. So um, we just be that point person and we can guide you in whatever direction you need to get to, to get your, answer, your questions answered. Fantastic. Um, is there a way to, when your student misses school, to um, email the school to let you know why they've missed school instead of bringing in a note or do they have to bring in a note? The, the preferred method would be to bring in a note the next day. Um, they could email Ms. Carlson. The, the problem is she is a one man operation in the attendance office and one woman operation and gets a, a bombarded with a lot of emails. And so it's, it's harder to track. Um, so it is best to bring in a note the following day. Um, also to bring in a note the morning of for a, um, for a grounds permit, we understand there's emergency situations and sometimes an email is the, is a, a, the best way for the parent, but just know that um, it, it becomes a lot for her to answer all those emails. So a, a note, a kid bringing a note would be ideal. Ms. Ishimaro, can you just make sure everybody knows how to find their counselor's email? Is that in Aries or how do they find that if they need to contact? They can you? find it in Aries, but you can also go to our website and it's also listed there. And it's usually our first initial, our last name at sbusd.net. But if they like don't the know like who their counselor is, like if the parent- It would be in Aries, they would be able to find it in Aries. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, great. Um, also, when will the 2022-2023 school profile be posted on the counseling page? It is not quite up. Um, that's usually what we send to the um, colleges through Naviance. So we're just, since it's day nine of school, uh, we're just trying to get 
up and running fully and get our fifth counselor on board and that will be something we'll be working with. Um, we have to go back with the data because it partly is data from last year. So we will be working with the admins on that in terms of, for example, like our national merit students and, and how what percentage went to a four year or was eligible for a, a through G or a four year university and what percentage went to PCC. So all that data has to be, placed into that uh, that profile. So as soon as we get that up and running, it'll be up, uh, but it usually is attached to the Naviance first to go with the transcripts for the initial uh, transcript sent through Naviance for the colleges. Okay, great. Um, and then I think this might be a question for you, but if it's not, if you'll pass it to whoever it is, um, regarding PCC dual enrollment courses for the spring offerings, um, my child really wants to take uh, a dual enrollment, but we kind of we're wondering if they might be listed a little more ahead of time so we can plan ahead a little more. Do you know when those will be listed for spring? Yes, you know what? I'll take that on. Yes. Um, with all the changes in administration and office staff and retirements and such, I apologize. It was hard to get all that information out for the dual enrollment. Um, it will be out much sooner next year. We're kind of looking right now. We, we were able to offer four offerings, which was really great. Um, we are struggling right now with speech, which is a fantastic course um, for students to take. It's something that's really gonna help them. It's a college level, they're all college level courses, 10 credits. So if anyone's interested in speech, I just sent out a parent score today because we may not be able to run that class. The numbers are so low. Psychology was a huge hit this year. Sociology, kinesiology. Um, but if we had, we had to turn away some kids from psychology because we couldn't get another teacher. So we're hoping to offer that in the next um, semester's offerings. But yes, I promise I will be as diligent as I can. As soon as I get the offerings from PCC, I will get those out for the spring. Um, it was just a, a, a hard time with a lot of changes this year. So we really appreciate your patience. And the people got those their, their requests in really quickly this time around. So um, plan ahead. We're, we'll at least try to offer one. If not, we had four this semester. So let's, we're going to try to keep that up. It's a goal of our, in our district to expand. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so I want to keep to the 830. So I'm going to ask a few more questions. And then um, if there are more questions, we, uh, you can email them to me. I will put my email in the chat and I will get them out to the right people or you can, you know, everybody's emails are pretty much first initial last name at sbusd.net um, and you can email them too, but I do want to let people go because it is getting late and it's been a really long meeting. <laughs> so um, just, I know a few people at the beginning heard this, but um, just to clarify, if you didn't get your senior pictures taken, where what can you do to get your seniors photo in the yearbook to make sure they get a good photo in the yearbook mr shawell is that you i i can take that question sure um i would contact karen hames the advisor directly to make sure that that happens okay and so how do like you we mentioned earlier you don't need to take it through bronson but you can contact bronson if you weren't able to make your appointment and make an appointment or make an appointment elsewhere okay and it's karen hames how do you spell hames h-a-m-e-s thank you i can put her email in the chat if you want uh, that'd be great if it doesn't go to everyone i'll make sure it gets to everybody um okay. and then um one question about choir. So is choir a music boosters thing or is that a or is that funded through just regular boosters? Because one parent was very confused about how to donate to choir. I don't think they're funded through anybody, but they do have an account that runs through our booster. So if people do want to donate to uh, the boosters, uh, they can certainly they certainly can and it, it will help. Uh, I believe program. music boosters is for instrumental music. So it's correct. Uh, everything was yeah. So choir choir can come through regular boosters and, and we, they have an account through, okay, through regular boosters. Okay. And so, and somebody asked, you know, how do you donate with a credit card? You can do that with PayPal through the music boosters website or the uh, SPHS PTSA website. You can do that as well. So regular boosters as well. Yeah. Credit card through PayPal. It's fine. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Um, thank you so much for, I'm sorry to the couple of questions that I didn't get to, um, but I really wanna thank everybody for being here tonight. It's such an informative night, especially for new parents who are so confused about everything. Please feel free to you know, email me or I'm gonna put my email in here um, or email any of the people here. They're always welcome to answer your questions. We all want you to understand how things work at the high school. I know it's so different from the middle school. So I know this to me this night always helped me remember, oh, right, that's where we find that. So I hope it was helpful for all of you. Thank you so much for coming.